Hello, my name is Dr. Gerard Toll, and this is an introduction to a Government International Affairs Political Science 5254 Global Conflicts for the spring of 2019. Um, this uh, brief video lecture is simply an introduction to the course. It's what I would say to you if this was a regular course uh, and this was our first meeting. So uh, what you need to do, obviously this is an online class, you need to go to Canvas, you need to familiarize yourself with Canvas and how it works. Um, our course uh, system uh, is available and you'll be able to uh, grasp how to deal with announcements, assignments, uh, discussion, uh, and so on, and the modules and the syllabus. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about the syllabus. So I've been teaching this class for about 25 years um, as an online class. Um, so it is a class that has evolved over the years. Um, and this uh, particular class that I've put together for the spring of 2019 really deals with the um, the world that we live in right now and some of the emergent challenges. In particular, there's a lot of discussion of the return of great power competition, as if that ever really went away. Um, and so I am going to have uh, modules which address this um, at the end of the course. But the, the foundation of the course has always been a theoretical examination of the building blocks of um, conflicts. And here we're talking really about uh, group conflicts. We're talking about interstate conflicts uh, and civil wars rather than uh, personal conflicts. Um, so there's a discussion uh, in the syllabus of the um, bloody 20th century uh, and the continuation of that in the 21st century. Um, so the modules really are uh, organized, uh, there's five modules altogether, and the first one is uh, built around the a discussion of the building blocks that combine to create what I call the triangle of conflict. So here, collective identity formation as a nation or as a people, uh, power, struggles over the state, over political authority, uh, and violence, and of course that's also political economy over uh, resources, uh, as well as geography, Strug struggle over territory, uh, conceptions of the homeland, uh, as well as uh, natural resources like oil and the like. So the territorial nation state brings those together. Territorial being the geographic material, nation being the imagined, uh, and state being the power apparatus. And how those are put together uh, is really what we are interested in looking at here. Uh, and of course, how that uh, occurs uh, plays out in different uh, ways in different places, depending upon the, the international system writ large and depending upon a series of regional and local factors. The class is an interdisciplinary class. It's not a political science class. Uh, it is a uh, one that is um, uh, informed by a literature broadly uh, in social science. So we're using work by geographers, historians, sociologists, uh, and others uh, in the course. So I'm interested in a broad social science understanding rather than giving you a disciplinary training. Now, you need to remember that their literature on conflicts and low conflicts is enormous. Uh, uh, there are whole subfields devoted to this particular uh, set of topics. Obviously, we're making choices in this class uh, in order to try to provide you with a graduate level introduction to some of these issues. So here are the particular texts. And so what I've done is I've anchored the class around uh, these particular texts. Um, and so there's one, two, three, four, five. I've actually made five uh, recommended uh, required books here. You will notice that I have uh, not 
I had Rogers Brubacher's book, uh, Nationalism Reframed, as a required because uh, we will be uh, certainly reading that book, but the, uh, that book is available as PDFs and various chapters which have been published elsewhere uh, on, on Canvas. So you don't necessarily need to have a copy of that, although any good library should have a copy of that book. And we'll also be reading from his other book, Ethnicity Without Groups. Um, and you'll also notice that uh, I have it in that particular list here, this uh, stack of books, uh, Rachel Kleinfeld's book, A Savage Order. That's just come out. Uh, it's 2018 book. I haven't got my copy yet, uh, but I've read uh, sections of it and I think it's going to complement uh, the key texts in, in the module uh, that, where we discuss violence. So what are the modules? Well, I said that the course rests upon a foundation uh, of a discussion of identity, power, uh, and uh, geography. So the first module deals with the theorizing of nations, states, and territories. Um, and what I've done is I provided you a series of uh, lectures that I have recorded uh, a while back uh, on these particular topics. And so this is foundational. You'll read through a particular literature and certain key thinkers, and you'll be able to uh, grasp uh, where the debate is on these sets uh, of questions. Then we will go and we'll try to apply it uh, to uh, history. Uh, and we're looking at the whole issue of state formation and the homogenization of space and what goes along with that, which is the destroying of a uh, place, um, the destroying of multi-ethnic, multi-confessional uh, spaces. And that's part of the development of the, um, the age of nationalism. So it's the 19th century and the 20th century. Um, and then uh, we will move to a module which is theorizes violence in civil wars, but not only in civil wars, it's, all, it's really looking at, at violence uh, uh, writ large. Um, and then the last two modules on Russia's affective geopolitics uh, in the near abroad with a focus on Ukraine and China's affective geopolitics, particularly with a focus in the South China Sea. Both of those get at the issue that I mentioned at the outset, which is um, the return of great power competition. And so I have added these modules for you to begin to um, uh, understand uh, the uh, larger geopolitical context within which the United States is currently seeking to uh, redefine its, its foreign policy. So you have an understanding of, of these uh, rival powers. Uh, to the United States. So five different modules um, and five really anchoring texts. But um, the texts that uh, I have assigned are only uh, the core of the module. You will also um, be required to read a series of articles around those uh, core texts. So this is a graduate level class. You have three weeks for each module, 15 weeks in total. So I would expect that uh, you would read the equivalent of roughly a book a week. So the two other weeks will be taken up with reading articles. And that's about five articles per week. So it's about 10 articles supplemental altogether. Um, so that's how the course is, is put together. Uh, there's quite a bit of reading. And of course, key to it uh, are uh, answering the assigned questions with each, each module. So um, how the course is organized is that you will uh, be given uh, um, an assignment, uh, which will be available to you uh, here. Uh, you'll click on that, uh, and then you will find out what the assignment is. Um, you click on this, that will give you the details of it. Um, and uh, then you will go to the modules. Uh, and each module will have a series of different uh, resources for you. Uh, lectures, uh, video uh, lectures, sometimes some uh, links to outside lectures, which will um, inform the uh, core reading and will discuss the core reading for you. 
So it is quite like a, a real class, a real face-to-face -face class. You're going to see me, you're going to hear me, you're going to get a, my perspective, a, my analysis. And in certain instances, you're actually going to read uh, things that I've written. So in the fourth module, uh, the core text will be my book, uh, Near Abroad. Um, and we will be focused on the Ukraine aspect of that, but I also want you to read the Georgia aspect because there's a larger uh, uh, context here. Uh, and uh, that is something that I want you to be able to grasp and understand. Um, even though it is in Ukraine today, the conflict over the territorial conflict over Crimea and the, the Donbass that I want you to, to understand in depth. The uh, conflict over Georgia is much more static uh, and frozen um, in, in contrast to the Donbass. So um, the uh, class has a discussion um, forum. Uh, which will be available to you uh, very soon. Uh, and here you will introduce yourself and you can ask questions uh, about the readings. Um, this is not required. Uh, it is something that is supplemental. It is something that uh, it should be used as a resource if you have trouble uh, or if you want to discuss uh, something uh, publicly. Um, but it is like having a, a discussion in class. Other people will see it uh, and there are certain rules uh, governing respectful uh, discussion that should be uh, uh, kept in mind at all times. There's no grade for this. Uh, the grade is uh, determined by your uh, written work uh, in your uh, assignments. Those five assignments, each of which represents 20% of your grade, uh, and that grade will be given as a letter grade each time, along with comments. Now, let me say a little bit about uh, the process uh, of grading. Uh, when I get your assignments, I will get them through Canvas. I will uh, upload them, uh, or sorry, download them. I will read them. I will go into your uh, text, and I will provide you with comments. Um, and um, here you should read in the uh, latter part of the syllabus what makes uh, a good A assignment, what makes a B assignment, what makes a C assignment. Um, I want you to uh, keep in mind that um, the feedback that I give you is, not, is sometimes capitalized, and I do that to try to distinguish the text that I'm providing from what you have written so you can see quite clearly, you can pick it out visually, what it is uh, I am uh, saying. This is not an indication that I'm shouting uh, at you in the, in the particular feedback. My feedback um, uh, uh, is about providing you with critical, constructive feedback. Um, I have no interest in any way in uh, providing uh, being negative. Uh, I am simply providing you with uh, the information, uh, the feedback, which I think will help lift your assignment uh, to a higher level. Sometimes this uh, is confused by students and they think it's personal. It is not personal. I do not know you. All as I can see is the text in front of me. And so I will provide you with feedback on that based upon my experience as a, a professor teaching this course for 25 years. Uh, and if your work is poor, if it's uh, sentences are poorly constructed, if they're unclear, uh, if there's uh, spelling errors uh, and so on and so forth, if there's errors concerning uh, the author's names, and the places, this reflects on you. Uh, it, uh, but it's something that I think that you should uh, be conscious of, uh, try to avoid. Um, the first assignment is uh, probably the most important where you will get a sense of the standard that I want to set for the class, which is always going to be high, but uh, it, it, the class is not an advanced class. It is uh, an introductory graduate level class. Um, and it is one that uh, requires you to respond uh, positively. 
uh, or at least challenges you to respond positively to the, the feedback uh, that you're getting in these particular uh, assignments. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I look forward to um, interacting with you, uh, reading your work, providing you with comments on it, and taking you through uh, this set of literatures. Um, I may make a few alterations, uh, but nothing substantive to the uh, syllabus uh, as we proceed, perhaps responding to current affairs and, and the like. So I still have the term draft here, but in effect, uh, uh, you know, there's going to be very little alteration of the syllabus from what you see uh, in front of you. Okay, so with that, I wish you the very best of luck uh, in this class in the spring uh, of 2019.